Hi guys, it's Dress of Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my summer book haul. Alright guys, so I know I just posted a book haul like less than a month ago. However, I work in a school. So my school, the way it works is we break for two weeks and then I do home therapy and extended school year like ABA stuff in the summer. However, my hours are drastically reduced. So I have a ton of time to read. So I normally buy a decent amount of books during this like two year gap or two week gap. And I feel like I went a little bit overboard and I bought like a ton. So we're going to talk about them. Um, most of these books are fantasy romance and then romance. And in romance, I have romantic suspense, dark romance, forbidden romance, all that fun stuff. So as all of my book hauls, I sort this by genre. So if you're looking for a certain genre, you can look at the timestamps down below. And yeah, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all out of the way, let's talk about all these books. <laughs> all right, so starting off with YA Fantasy, I have two books for this. First up, we have Twin Crowns, and this is by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. This is a very fun and unique YA fantasy. It is following two twin girls, and on the night of their birth, their parents tragically die. So one girl, Ren, is kidnapped by a witch, and this witch hopes to raise Ren to be a liberator for all of the witches. And then our other character, Rose, ends up being orphaned at the very beginning, and she is raised by the king's second in command. Now, she has no idea she has a twin sister, and she lives a very luxurious life, but also a very lonely life. So this book is really what happens when these two trade places with each other, and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It has every trope you could want in a YA fantasy, and then it did have its dark moments, but also very well-timed comedic moments. So I highly recommend checking this out. This is like the perfect summer YA fantasy. And next up for YA Fantasy, we have The Stardust Thief, and this is by Chelsea Abdullah. So I've heard very good things. This is actually the Fairy Loot edition. Um, as always, Fairy Loot, absolutely beautiful. There's also artwork inside this that I really, really love. It's like a cartoon style, and I just like the way it's done. But anyway, about the book. So this is following a thief who uses a djinn or like a genie as a bodyguard. And she's very good at stealing stuff. So good that the king realizes that she's a thief and blackmails her into trying to get this magic relic. So this sounds really fun. I will say I didn't know how long this was. I was planning on reading this in June and then it got here and I saw the length and now I'm putting it off until like July or August. But this should be really fun. And like I said, a lot of people are loving it right now. So definitely check it out. All right. And next up for YA Fantasy, we have... Fable, and this is by Adrian Young. So this book is the perfect summer book. It is so atmospheric. You feel like you are sailing on the seas while you're reading it. It's such a good time. So we are following Fable, whose father is this very revered pirate, and he ends up just abandoning Fable on this island that is filled with like murderers and thieves. And he tells her, if you're able to make it off this island on your own, and find me like you can be part of my crew. So Fable eventually does that and then she ends up going on like a treasure hunt with a bunch of other like miscreants and it's like a whole fam found family trope and it's just really fun and the writing in this is just beautiful. I love the way this book is written. Like I said, you feel like you're on the water the entire time you're reading this and it's just really, really good. So I already pre-ordered Namesake, which is the second book in this duology that I will definitely be reading this summer. And then there's another companion book, Saint, which is all about her father. And I'm very curious because her father has like a very mysterious backstory. So highly recommend if you're thinking about picking up this book, do it now. Now is the perfect time. It is just, it's so good. And next up, we have The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea, and this is by Maggie Takuda Hall. So I honestly purchased this just because I thought the cover was really pretty and nautical. Um, I don't know like anything about this. So I believe this is following a girl that is about to marry someone. She's in an arranged marriage and she's like heading to meet him 
I think she dislikes him, but she's like marrying him because her father said so or like something of that nature. And then the crew of the ship she is on end up taking all of the passengers captive. And then I think she falls in love with one of the crew members. So this should be a fun time. Like I said, I literally just bought it because of the cover, but I looked up on Goodreads and it does have really good reviews and it just has that whole like nautical feel. And during the summer, I really like reading books that are like set on the water. So super excited to jump into this. This will definitely be on my July TBR. All right, and last up for like nautical YA fantasy, we have Daughter of the Pirate King, and this is by Trisha Levenseller. So this is another book I bought simply because I loved the cover. Now the issue is I don't love Trisha Levenseller's writing. Um, I read The Shadows Between Us, and I think I rated that as like one of my lowest rated books of 2021. I just, I don't know. I feel like her books are very short and she tries to like cram a lot in there, and her main characters are like overly angsty. And reading the back of this, I feel like this big character might have like that same thing going on. But I'm still very interested. This is a very short book. A lot of people have said this is one of their favorite books by Trisha Levenseller. So I'm willing to give it a try. We will see. But yeah, so I believe this is just following a 17 year old girl that ends up being taken by pirates, but that kind of tries to like take over the ship herself or like something of that nature. I could be completely off base there, but I'm curious. So I will also be reading this at some point in July. All right, and then next up we have Ecstasia, and this is by Claire Legrand. So I don't know very much about this. I know that it is a sapphic, witchy, gothic tale about this girl that ends up being one of the higher ups in her coven. And I honestly don't plan on reading this until the fall. It just gives me those like autumnal vibes. And I actually have two books on this list that are like witchy and creepy that I'm very excited about. So yeah, I don't plan on reading this for a while, but it should be really good. All right, this next book, I'm actually not sure if it's YA fantasy or adult fantasy. However, it's a sequel and I love the first book. So this is For the Throne and this is by Hannah Witten. So the first book, For the Wolf, was one of my favorite reads of last year. It's following these two girls and one of them is For the Throne and the second born is For the Wolf. So the first book, we're following Red, who is the sister chosen for the wolf. And after escaping this like super eerie and menacing forest, she meets the wolf and she finds out that he's not exactly what she was expecting. And then we're also following the other main character who ended up being for the throne and she's kind of being manipulated by like all of the people around her. So this is her story and I am so interested as to what's going to happen because there is so much going on in this first book in terms of like politics but also romance and it just had a little bit of everything and it also had that very like autumnal vibe. So I'm excited about this. I think it should be really good. I know it kind of got mixed reviews, but I absolutely loved the first book and I'm very excited to jump to the second one. Okay, this next book is an adult fantasy and we're just gonna talk about fairy loot for a second. So first up, this next one is Her Majesty's Royal Coven and this is by Juno Dawson. So this is like a witchy uh, story, adult fantasy story, and it's following this witch society that was started by Anne Boleyn. I love that premise. Uh, however, Fairy loot. So the first three fairy loot books, two fairy loot books, no three, three fairy loot books we received were all black and white. Like there was no color whatsoever. And I was like, this is weird. Like why are they kind of assuming that adults don't like color? Because a lot of their other like YA books are very colorful. Then this came in. This is the most neon yellow you could possibly imagine. I love the sprayed edges, super pretty. But like this, it's so vibrant, but like, to an extreme and then if you're like okay well it's just the dust jacket like what's the naked hardback look like it is neon pink like the brightest of pinks you could possibly imagine so like i i don't know is this better than the black and white i feel like they just did two extremes it's either like completely absent of color or we get this so that's my feelings on the Fairy Loot adult subscription. I'm still keeping it just because I have liked all the books they've selected so far. But like, can we, we either need to tone down the color a little bit or just like, just little pops of color would be fine. I, I don't think anyone needed this neon pink. I'm sorry if you're a huge fan of it. It's just not my taste. But anyway, I am very excited to read this book. That is another book that I probably will push off until like September, October, just because that's when I like to read those like witchy kind of books. All right, so moving into a fantasy romance. First up, we have The Inadequate Heir. So this is a companion novel to the Bridge Kingdom duology by Danielle L. Jensen. I have a full spoiler-free review of the Bridge Kingdom duology that I'll leave in the cards and in the description. 
but I am so looking forward to reading this. I'm actually waiting for the audiobook to come out. I don't believe it's been released yet, but if this is half as good as The Bridge Kingdom, I think it's going to be amazing. So definitely looking forward to jumping into this one. And moving on, next up we have Wicked Beauty, and this is by Katie Robert. This is the third book in her Dark Olympus series. So the first one is Indian Gods. I love that book. It is so good. It is like the perfect amount of spice and romance. The world building's a little messy, but it's totally still amazing book. And then the second one's Electric Idol. I wasn't a huge fan of that one. I know that is a lot of people's favorites. Um, I didn't love the romance as much as Neon Gods. So this one is like a menage type situation. We're having, or it's a relationship between Achilles, Helen of Troy, and Patroclus. So this should be really fun. I've been seeing a lot of people say that this book is a little bit more plot heavy than the other two. I think I'll be okay with that. I generally like Katie Roberts writing. I loved the uh, Disney villainous series. So this should be really fun. And last up for fantasy romance this is actually like a monster romance. And that is The Beast. And this is by Jenica Snow. So I'm actually reading this for a vlog that should be released by the time this video comes out. Um, I'm doing it in collab with Sam Reads A Little. So I'll have her channel linked down below in the description. Love her content. So this book is a novella style book. It is following Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast retelling, except the beast never turns back into a human. And it should be fun. I've seen really good reviews. I got this when it was on sale on Amazon. I will say this book arrived in terrible condition. Um, I very rarely leave negative reviews or ask for a refund of a book. This book came covered in lotion. I know that sounds really disturbing now that I'm thinking about it, but like completely covered to the point where I opened it and my entire office smelled like a very strong floral scent. And it actually kind of ruined the cover of the book, if you can tell. Like, I got it off, but anyway, just know, if you're ordering it from Amazon, you might have an issue. But anyway, I'm very excited to read this. Hopefully it's good. Still very nervous about Monster Romance at the time of filming this. I've only read one, and I didn't love it, so we will see. But very excited to jump into this one. All right, so moving into romance, I'm going to start off with, like, Dark Forbidden Romance, and then move into Romantic Suspense, followed by Contemporary, like, Lighthearted Romance. So first up, we have All the Thorns Remain. This is by Jennifer Hartman. This is probably my favorite Jennifer Hartman book. I talk about it in my May wrap up. This is following a guy, it's, in, it's a male point of view, which I typically don't love, but it really works for this book. And he has been recently divorced. His wife cheated on him and he is just out for revenge and he does not care who he hurts along the way. And he devises this scheme in order to get back at the person that his wife cheated on him with. And it's just a wild story, but I really ended up enjoying it. Um, it is very depressing. I would definitely check trigger warnings and you get very frustrated with like every single character in this book, but it was really good. So definitely if you're a fan of Jennifer Hartman or you want to try out her books, I very much recommend this one. All right, next up is probably the most taboo out of all the books on this list. And that is the Off Balance series. And this is by Lucia Franco. So Lucia Franco is slowly becoming one of my favorite romance authors. I'm currently reading Hush Hush by her and it is so smutty, but so good. I'm like really liking it. And this series is super controversial. It is totally not gonna be for everyone. And I think that's valid. This is following a girl who's trying to make it as an Olympian gymnast and she's training and she ends up having a relationship with her gym coach. And there is a significant age gap between these two people. And he's also in a position of authority over her. And it's, yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable feeling. So if you are triggered by any of that, I do not recommend picking this book up. There were parts of this book that I did have to kind of skim because it was just not, it made me feel very uncomfortable. However, I'm living for their relationship and I kind of wish I wasn't, but it is a very addicting read. Um, this relationship is probably the most toxic relationship I have ever read in a book. Like it has so many problems, but I can't stop reading about them. So I, yeah, I still have to kind of figure out my feelings regarding this book. However, I definitely do plan on finishing the series. Uh, the first three books I actually read via audio. I didn't realize the entire season wasn't released or season. All of the books weren't released yet in audio format. So now I'm physically reading the rest of the books on my Kindle. Um, this is the, I don't know if it's a special edition, but this is kind of like the first three books uh, bound together. And then I plan on eventually getting volume two. I don't love the covers of the Off Balance series. Um, they kind of add to the cringiness. So I do actually like this cover. I think it's like really pretty, but yeah. So sorry, that was kind of a mess of thoughts regarding this book, but I'm enjoying it. I don't recommend it for everyone. 
and just no check trigger warnings going into it. But yeah, so far I am really enjoying it. <laughs> And next up, we have the Stay With Me series, and this is by Nicole Fiorita. I only have the first book. I thought I ordered the other two. Apparently, I didn't. Um, so I still have to get those. I love this series, but it is bonkers. It is crazy. It is such a wild series. So much goes on. I remember finishing the first book and being like, I have no idea how to rate this. So we're following our main character who's been diagnosed as being a sociopath. She, like, doesn't show any emotion and she's just been getting in trouble in school. So she ends up being shipped off to this reformatory college where she meets Ollie, who is her exact opposite. And he has the disorder that he feels emotions too deeply. And he decides that he is in love with our main character and is gonna do everything to get her to be in a relationship. And it's just, so much happens. This feels like a soap opera. Like there are so many just crazy things that come out of the woodwork. And I couldn't put this series down. Like, I couldn't stop reading. So I highly recommend. I love this. I feel like there are going to be people out there that absolutely hate it. Totally okay. But yeah, definitely give it a try. See what you think. Ollie Masters is like my new favorite book boyfriend. But it was just, it was really, really fun. All right. And next up, we have The Words. And this is by a Jade. I actually have a full Rockstar Romance recommendation video. I will leave in the cards and in the description. This book was amazing. This is probably one of my top reads of 2022. I know it is super chunky, but you can easily read this book in two sittings. It is just so addicting. So this is following Lennox and Phoenix. Phoenix is this boy who kind of has a troubled life. He is pursuing a music career, but before he can do that, he needs to graduate high school and he is failing his classes. So he enlists Lennon to tutor him. Lennon is this super sweet girl who's being picked on in school because of her weight. Her father is this composer and she's really afraid she's not going to like live up to his expectations. So soon after Lennon starts tutoring Phoenix, they end up having a relationship and then Phoenix does something terrible to Lennon and just completely breaks her trust. So they go eight years without speaking or it's like eight to 10 years without speaking. So then after their estrangement, they end up being put in a situation where they have to work together. And it was just, it was so good. I love this book. It has great dyslexia representation and also a lot of body positivity. And it's just, it's such an amazing read. So I highly recommend if you have not read this yet, pick it up. It's so good. All right, these next two books are both by Kate Stewart. So first up we have Someone Else's Ocean. This is following Ian and Cody. So our, both of our main characters are going to St. Thomas in order to escape their lives. So Cody has moved there after working in New York for a while and she's just not happy. So she's been living in St. Thomas and just getting by and trying to figure out what she wants to do with the rest of her life. Then Ian ends up having a divorce from his wife and also goes to St. Thomas where he used to vacation as a child. So these two actually met when they were six years old because both of their parents used to vacation at this vacation spot. Now, when Cody sees Ian as an adult, he wants nothing to do with her. However, she slowly helps him heal. And it's just their relationship and how they are on this island trying to discover themselves. And this was really fun. I will say I read this at the end of May and I loved it while I was reading it, but I kind of had to go back and skim a little bit. It is a little bit forgettable, but it's still a really fun and just relaxing read. Perfect for the summertime. So highly recommend. And next up is Drive by Kate Stewart. I love this book. It is so good and it has one of my favorite love triangles of like any book I've ever read. So our main character is looking back on her life and she's looking back kind of using songs. So every chapter starts with a different song and she kind of correlates like songs with her life and I love the way it's done in this. So everything kind of starts when our main character is in college and she is pursuing a career in music journalism. And she ends up meeting one of her sister's friends who is the struggling musician. And then she meets another guy who ends up working or owning a music journal type thing. And these two guys completely shape the rest of her life. And it's just glorious and really fun. And I highly recommend picking it up. Now there will be a um, companion novel coming out this summer in July, Reverse. I cannot wait for that book. I'm so excited. So anyway, definitely read this before Reverse comes out. I listened to it via audio and it was really good. So highly, highly recommend. And next up is another rock star romance and that is Bricks. And this is by Brooke O'Brien. It is part of her A Rebel's Havoc series. I've only read this first book. So far it's really good. It's a step sibling rock star romance following Bricks and Ivy. Ivy ends up going back to her hometown to stay with her mother over the summer. And when she gets there, she finds out that her mother has married Bricks, 
her biggest tormentor in high school's father. So now they are step siblings and they end up having a relationship and we get to kind of find out more about Bricks and like why he tormented Ivy in high school. And it's just fun. It's a very short read, easily read it in one sitting and it was a really good time. All right, and moving into romantic suspense, we have Where the Blame Lies by Mia Sheridan. So Mia Sheridan also wrote Archer's Voice. This book is nothing like Archer's Voice and I was just not prepared for how like dark and gritty this book was in the best way. I love this book. I also love Archer's voice. They just feel like they were written by different people. So this book is following our main character who ends up being abducted and kept as like a slave for a year and ends up having a baby with her abductor. And then she is, is able to escape. And then years later, we find out that that killer might still be out there. And it's just, it is intense and kind of gross at points and it's just definitely checked trigger warnings but i love this book this was so good one of my favorite romantic suspense if not my favorite new romantic suspense there it is a duology there is a second book the second book i didn't love it's a lot slower paced um i just wasn't as connected with the characters but this book is really good so if you like romantic suspense definitely pick this one up all right and next up i have the entire crossfire series so i actually got this from thrift books which is why these books look a little rough but I have never read this series before. So there's a bunch of romance booktubers that are absolutely amazing. And a lot of us are going to be vlogging reading this series. I think for most people, it's gonna be a reread. Like I said, I've never actually read this series before. Um, I know it came out during like the 50 Shades of Grey era. And I'm really curious. I know it's a millionaire romance. And yeah, it really is giving me like 50 Shades of Grey vibes. I read all the 50 Shades of Grey books. I never watched the movies or maybe I watched like the first movie, but yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, let me know if you read the Crossfire series, if you're someone that follows my content and what you think. Um, the books are also a little bit longer than I thought they were going to be. So this might take me a little while, but very excited to jump into this series. And last up, we have My Killer Vacation and this is by Tessa Bailey. So I just love the cover of this book. I love, I don't know, it just gives me like summer vibes. So I believe this is following a bounty hunter and then a teacher that loves true crime podcasts. And the teacher ends up finding a dead body in her Airbnb or whatever she's renting. And then she tries to assist the bounty hunter in tracking down the killer. I think this is also a motorcycle romance. So I don't know, I'm curious. Tessa Bailey is really hit or miss for me. I have loved some of her books and absolutely hated others. So I'm a little bit nervous, but it just seems like a really fun, summer romance and I can't wait to start it. All right guys, thank you for watching my summer book haul. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of the books I mentioned. I said this already, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week, bye.